Activity meaning uh, like explosions or or yeah, what? Yeah, I think okay. I think when people uh, think of hydrogen gas, they immediately go to like the Hindenburg. Um, ah, obviously, yes. we've come a long way, but <laughs> the Hindenburg complex. Yes. Um, yes. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, to speak to that, I mean, um, with respect to, I don't think it's linked to fuel cells. Um, what the the reason why there's a hazard there is because the fuel cells are actually very low pressure devices. Um, the the gas in your bike tire, uh, the air in your bike tire is at a higher pressure than uh, than in a lot of, uh, well, actually all fuel cells. Um, but the reason why we have to store hydrogen at such high pressure is because of the that energy density comment that I was making earlier. Um, now, if we want to get down to the facts on the Hindenburg, it was actually a, a, a framing failure uh, that caused the spark that led to the the hydrogen blowing up. If that if that balloon was full of natural gas, it, it would have blown up just as good. Um, but uh, but anyhow, the the safety aspects of hydrogen is it's it's not all that. What I what I when I talk to people from the natural gas sector, um, it there's incredible there's an incredible amount of parallels between how we handle methane now. There's methane in your home. It's under your sink, um, and and we. We we drive around in cars that have controlled explosions uh, happening, you know, a foot from our feet. So it obviously there will be learnings over time, uh, and obviously we need to be very conscious about this sort of. I don't want to say new technology because it's not totally new, um, but we are storing it at incredibly high pressures in in vehicles. Um, you know, 700, 900 bar. Uh, that's higher. That's a higher pressure than in most high pressure pipelines uh, underground. Um, and so it's safety is is real. You have to treat it very seriously. Um, but know that uh, and and this is uh, speaking from experience that that you know our our regulatory bodies and our and our permitting bodies that that are responsible for keeping us safe and the engineers of the world um, uh, are are very um, uh, conscious of that. And so uh, the days of the Hindenburger are so far behind us. <laughs> Capability of being one of the, yes, but I don't, and this is, uh, I gotta be careful. Um, I don't wanna give too many opinions, um, but um, it sort of what I, what I presented before was that uh, people smarter than me um, who uh, who are predicting these things are predicting in the range of of 25 to 50 percent of the energy mix, right? And one of the biggest challenges associated with that is our current energy infrastructure. It's a completely different um, fuel. Uh, we don't have hydrogen pipelines. We don't have hydrogen refilling stations. We don't have hydrogen trucks everywhere. Uh, we do have diesel, natural gas oil, um, the electricity grid itself, um, those exist. And so those are like short term um, and transferable. So uh, I wanna say, like I can confidently say it's going to be a big part. Uh, the biggest, my, my take is no. Um, things, will, things will be electrified first, but hydrogen will have a large piece of the, of the pie. Couple options there, and I'm, I'm really glad you asked that question. Um, there's so I'll start right right from inside of academia before you even leave university. Um, there's plenty of institutions, um, like I know, for example, UBC uh, is doing a, a lot of work uh, on hydrogen. They have a specific group called Marita Labs, who who are very focused on on hydrogen solutions. Um, you can do research. You can do a master's in um, in um, in hydrogen technologies, fuel cells, for example. Um, there's a lot of ways to do it that way. And that's, that's actually more geared towards engineering. So, but for what I would suggest for someone graduating um, is take a look out there at who's, who's in hydrogen, who's investing in it. 
um, because one of my, I used to say this about, um, like uh, this, is, this is years ago, I used to say this about um, really keen environmentalists who were struggling with um, uh, the oil and gas sector. Uh, and what I always just say to them is the best place to go uh, to make change and to impact and to get involved is to actually go work for these companies because they're the ones that are doing the work. They're the ones that frankly have the money. Um, and so there's, there's plenty of options. You can go many routes. You can, you could uh, look at joining a small entity, a small company, uh, like a startup who's working on a specific technology. You can go work for an engineering firm. Um, you can go work for, I, I mean, like it, speaking to your background, you know, uh, finance and uh, finance and commerce, like uh, they're like folks like KPMG, that, like they they're all getting involved in advising uh, their investors and their clients uh, on, you know, what, what what to make of this uh, of this, you know, all of a sudden um, hydrogen sector. Um, so I guess my tips would be if you're still in school, uh, do some research, um, figure out how you like what you can get involved in at university. Uh, in hydrogen and if you're not in school and you're either on your way out or out um, find out who's doing what and and just start a conversation it's uh that's the best way to do it to to piggyback off of the existing infrastructure would be to uh do things like hydrogen blending I uh, know I've, I've kind of been hard on hydrogen blending in the in the presentation because of the energy losses in the in the pipeline, but there are technologies people are working on things whereby you can inject the hydrogen upstream, for example, at a generation facility or a, or, or or what have you, and then there's technologies that people are working on downstream that can actually pull that hydrogen out um, from the stream, so almost kind of like using the methane highway to to move hydrogen. <laughs> um, uh, so that that being an option um, for existing infrastructure, um, underutilized renewables uh, can be used to generate hydrogen in a mode or a way called or thing referred to as peak shaving, um, because it's uh, at night when it's windy and all of our lights are off and we're not using any power, um, we could be generating hydrogen instead of just dumping it. Um, so existing infrastructure, but there there will be a lot of new infrastructure required. Um, uh, so look at if we want to roll out hydrogen fuel cell vehicles, we need different refueling stations. Um, some pumps, you can you know put a hydrogen pump at a gas station. There's many of those actually, even in British Columbia. And then I'm sure there's, um, if there aren't already, there's there's definitely a few coming for uh, for Alberta. Um, and so yeah, existing infrastructure, new infrastructure. Yeah, a lot of, uh, if it's green hydrogen, a lot of electrolyzers. <laughs> Um, to make hydrogen from uh, from water and power, um, but there's there's more than one way to do it. Um, there's uh, there's companies doing it from from waste sources, which I think is great. Um, uh, waste hydrogen, um, yeah. I can unpack more on that, but. <laughs> They, what I tried and what I try to do is I try to focus on facts uh, and math because I mean well first of all I'm an engineer so that's by default what I do but the uh, I, people can get very passionate um, about either their technology or what works for them uh, or what works where they live uh, but it doesn't it doesn't always work that way uh, and what I would recommend is to be to be open. Uh, and and have difficult conversations. Um, they're hard to have, and and uh, generally we as as uh, as humans avoid them um, because we don't like conflict. But um, you know, listen to somebody who wants to tell you that that you know oil is the future and we're never going to move away from it. And and also listen to somebody who 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 thinks that nuclear fusion is going to be that is going to be the the biggest piece of the energy mix. Um, because they all have very valid points, and and like I like I showed you guys, it's it's all going to be a part of it. Um, we're not the population is not getting smaller anytime soon. So um, yeah, it's uh, to to start the conversation. Uh, forums like this are great, and I, I love what you guys do um, because this is the perfect place um, to ask these questions, to have these conversations because. None of us here are are particularly married to any one um, any one way of generating or or creating energy. 
um, we all just want to, uh, and this is speaking globally, we all just want to, you know, have a good life. And if we can emit less, then that's great. Um, but we're all looking out for our wallets as well. Um, because, you know, it's expensive out there, as, as we all know. So. That's a good one. Uh, I'll try to try to address the first bit, and I might get you to reiterate the second bit to make sure that I that I answer the question. Um, how do they help and hurt? So, I mean, they obviously help because it's because um, it's it, it's public money, uh, and it's really one of the only one of the premier ways to get things started. There's right and wrong ways to do it, um, and and there's a lot of opinion about there, and and I'm. I'm not overly educated, overly educated on the policy side, uh, and and I know I've abstained from a lot of conversations about what the right funding mechanisms are. Um, but uh, what I've noticed is is that there's a lot of money out there for um, for large scale projects, big projects, um, and it, that what that does is that sort of forces um, the energy sector into um, a centralized model, uh, which forces us to, in, in hydrogen example, is to, to move it uh, by by rail and by truck, and and you know that's a that's another conversation that you can have about any any energy sources. What's safer? What's more economic? Um, is to is the decentralized model model or the centralized model? So one of my beefs previously um, was that a lot of the funding was focused on um, on production at a large scale. Um, I'll just say it. the clean fuels fund was a big example of it. You have to make 500 metric tons per year to get any money. Um, well, that's kind of a lot. And, and uh, it takes millions and millions of dollars to develop a project that size, even with funding. Um, so that's one way that funding, uh, you know, is uh, a bit limiting, uh, but there's different mechanisms that, that suit different technologies and different um, different, uh, what do you call it, uh, development areas of the sector. Uh, and so, you know, there's, there's the, um, the ZEB uh, program, uh, which whereby, you know, in British Columbia, for example, for a number of, the, of years, in the past number of years, was <clears throat> you, you got a, a rebate on your car if you bought an electric car. Um, those types of, of things are good. Um, what, uh, I have a bit of a bias because I feel as though we as consumers are responsible uh, more so uh, than than the production mode. If, if we're out there choosing uh, the greener option or the cleaner option, uh, then it's going to force industry to make more of it, for example. The challenge there being, um, I'm sitting here high on my pedestal um, because when I say that, I'm almost you know invoking um, that we have to spend more um because it, it costs me more to fill up it, it costs me more to buy a hydrogen car than it does to buy a regular car what if i can't afford a hydrogen car what do i do um so it, it's difficult because there's no perfect mechanism because it can't you can't the funding can't hit all the nail like can't hit everything um but yeah i i don't know i kind of gone down a rabbit hole there a little bit it is a it is a good question um and on, on that, to close it out, because it wouldn't be a presentation about hydrogen if I didn't say chicken and egg. So they're, like the big argument with, with hydrogen is like, is that uh, chicken versus the egg problem? Do we make more of it? Like, do we, do we, do we make the chicken? Or, or do, we, do we focus on the egg and what comes first? And um, you know, do we need more, you know, like um, big companies making hydrogen are like, hey, Toyota, make more, make more Mirais. And then Toyota saying, well, make more gas. Uh, make more hydrogen so that we can fill up our Mirais and, and, and all that. So it's, um, it's an interesting, you know, tug of war as we go along, but that tug of war happens as things are at, as production and demand both increase together. Um, but there's always that, that, that pull, that, that little tug of war going on. So. Well, honestly, thank you so much for your presentation. Um, I'm super excited to get to take another look at the mm -hmm. visuals too, and uh, and yeah, just spend some time getting in there even a little bit more. <laughs> and I apologize, I totally yeah. went over time on us here, so I hope that we haven't uh, thrown off the rest of your day.
not at all. Not at all. Amazing. Well, thank okay, you guys, so much. Well, it was my pleasure. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Enjoy uh, the thank rest of your much. Thursday and hope that you're having some great fall weather over there. And yeah, we'll be in touch. <laughs> we are quite lucky. <laughs> Lovely. Okay, guys. Thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. Take care. Thank you.